the birth of Jesus, according to Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 45, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. The angels tell Mary that she will be the mother of Jesus. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Read in favor one. The Lord is there. Do not be afraid, Mary. God has found favor with Mary, and now you will conceive in your room and bear a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. How can this be since I am a virgin? <laughs> And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. May it be to me as you have said. Goes to Elizabeth's home. The words of the prophet Isaiah were fulfilled. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. Then Mary went to Elizabeth's home. Come in. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in her womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there will be a fulfillment of what has been spoken to her by the Lord. My soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Caesar Augustus declares that there will be a census. Everyone will be counted and must return to their native towns. Let this be known to everyone. So the journey begins to Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph begin to travel. Joseph and Mary pack up and start their journey. They walk over to the first and second inns and knocks at the door but found no rooms. The third innkeeper offered help. Joseph doesn't think you will find any room available in this town, but he knows that Mary should not be traveling any more late this evening. The innkeeper tells Joseph that if he that he doesn't mind if he could get some rest in the stable out back. It wasn't the most comfortable place, but at least there will be a roof over your head, and the animal and the animals are wonderful. They will not bother you. 
My wife must have some rest. This table will be fine. Mm -hmm. Well then, follow me. I know God is with us. It is much better to sleep here than outside. I don't feel very well. I think it's time for the baby to come out. Meanwhile, some shepherds were tending their flocks at night, when suddenly an angel appears right before them. Please, Mary, lie down here on this nice bed I prepared. It won't be long now. All right, all right. An angel appears before them and says, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy. For today, in the city of David, there is born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Look, a bright and shiny light. The shepherds followed to see what they would find. The star is shining very bright for baby Jesus in the night. Sometime later, Three wise men saw a bright star in the sky and set out to find their king. By following the star, when they arrived, they bowed down. worship the king and offer their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
glory to God in the highest in the highest and on earth and on earth among men among peace among me. Generous God, you gave your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and be born of your chosen one. Mary, grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna get to know you better This Christmas and as we trim the tree How much fun is gonna be together This Christmas the fireside is blazing bright oh, oh. And we're caroling through the night
Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Didn't our babies do a nice job? Yes. 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 We're going to introduce them to you before they go downstairs because then you'll hear them and you won't see them. <laughs> Leave the door alone. We're gonna, Elizabeth was played. By Destiny, she's one of our new visitors from the church. Go stand over there. All right, where are wise men at? Come on out. Hezekiah McBride gave the Frankenstein. He gave the merch. And we have none other than Anthony, big Anthony McBride. He gave the gold. Not open my door. Yeah, he does. Stand over there. Stand over there. Right there. We have none other than the angel. Andre Ivory. Come on out here. The angel. Listen to the job. Y'all are the Mary and Joseph. When Joseph was told that he was going to do this, and I said to his dad, ah, Joseph agreed to do this. We have Joseph, who learned all his lines and did not need coaxing, did not need a paper, by none other than Tobias Jr. This is our son. He is the son of our musician. And then we have little Miss Corey, who was our Mary. She's not feeling well today because she knew her lines, but she's not feeling well. But they did an excellent job. Yes. Yes. I want to just share something that has nothing to do with the play yet. But last Sunday, we had an opportunity to go to Corey School. This school put on a play at the Millhouse Theater. Talk about a dynamic, awesome individual. Amen. He danced, he sang, he spoke in two languages. Oh. Oh. Yes. And he was amazing. So this boy has outstanding talent. And he, today, was playing all kinds of roles. He was the helper, the prop keeper. He was the um, shepherd. So this is Corey, our do it all man. Oh, 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 oh. So. Marquay Harvey, he was our innkeeper. Amen. Two years ago, he was so shy, he didn't even know his lines. <laughs> Unbelievable how he did today. Could you stand up? Our narrator, none other than the one hiding behind the scenes, is, is none other than our Darius. Darius. Yeah. And, um, the children's ministry middle school leader for downstairs with the boys. And wait a minute, I got the little one right here. Did you? He's a camel. He's a camel. He didn't want to. How many of you want to be with none of this today? But he's a camel. Amen. And we just propped all the other little ones up. Now, the star of the hour. The star. Where's she at? The star. Did she walk around and do her thing? She didn't want to keep the star on, but she was Jesus' the star. And she shined for Jesus today. None other than Yazani. And her parents are Albert and Kai. Kai <laughs> Garnier. Give the star a hand, because she had to move yesterday. She did a good job today. Yes. Then we have, she doesn't want me to say, but we had two assistant directors, one of which was Aaliyah, who's standing back there, who doesn't want to be recognize but I am and Latrice who's somewhere yeah, hiding okay so these were our children who put on this performance for you all and they worked very hard they had to get yelled at quite a bit on Saturday but 
to God be the glory. Yes. Thank you, parents, for your time, for bringing them out, for everything that you do to support what the children's ministry here does. Oh, baby Jesus. Oh, baby G, he sat through the whole thing. Bring baby Jesus up here. He's awake now. You know, every year, God blesses us with a baby. God blesses us with a real baby. And this year, we have legend. So I don't know who we gonna have next year for baby Jesus, but we'll get a real baby next year too. Legend is baby Jesus. His brother, his brother was baby Jesus two years ago. And where's he at? He was baby Jesus. The angel, where'd he go? Andre was baby Jesus. So we got baby Jesus is coming up from out of here. But that's a sign, y'all. That's a sign. God bless you because they ready to go eat. many of us have lost a long time ago and they hold a commitment to to doing uh, the right thing and to being what God has called them to be that many of us have never just have never discovered and if we did we forgot amen there is a name I love to hear I love to sing its praise It sounds like music In my ears The sweetest name Somebody know what I'm talking about There is a name I love to hear his love will I proclaim It sounds like music In my ear The sweetest name On earth It goes something like this, it says Oh, how I love Jesus. Come on, y'all know it. Oh, how I love Jesus. He calls. Come on, let's sing it again. Help me sing it. I say, oh. oh, oh I, I say, oh. oh I, I say, oh. Yes, I do. Sing a verse. His name is wonderful to me. He is wonderful to me. He is so wonderful. Just because he is, he's mine. Help me sing it, y'all.
Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God a praise in Jeff. Didn't he love you? Didn't he take care of you? I don't care what you've been through this year. I don't care how bad it got this year. Right now is Christmas time. And I thank you for bringing me over. Christmas time. I come to celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all can't be tired yet. We've only been here an hour. Amen. Hallelujah. There have been deaths. There's been struggles. There's been difficulties all year long. But you know what? When I go home tonight, I'm going to pull the covers up under my chin. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm not sitting up worried. I'm not sitting up crying. Because I got angels. Hey, hey. <laughs> They've been watching over me. All night. And all day. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about today. It got rough. <laughs> it got tough. I got beat down. I got talked about. I got criticized. I went broke. I got sad. I shed tears. Folk died on me. But all night and all day, I had angels watching over me. I wish I had a praying church. Today, all night, 
and all day they watched over my kids. They watched over my house. I haven't been that good, but they just keep watching. I got a little sick sometimes, but all night, hallelujah. I got a little sad sometimes, but all night.
ready for the word? There is a word. <laughs> Hallelujah. From the Lord. I'm trying to get to it, y'all. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries. I can't help it. My soul cries out. Help me, Holy Ghost. There's some scriptures written in the Bible, and I know that I have a few of them, and I didn't want to belabor. Some folk don't know how to find the scripture that quick, and I didn't want to take too much time, so for your convenience, I added them to your bulletin. Amen. 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 And there are three of them. The first one uh, I think was read in your hearing this morning and it comes from the book of Zechariah and it uh, comes from the second chapter starting with the fourth verse and it reads this way. From the, from the King James Version. Amen. From the King James Version. And said he unto him, run. Speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls, for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, says the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, mm -hmm. and will be the glory in the midst of her. Mm -hmm. Ho, ho, come forth, and flee from the land of the north, says the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. And then our next uh, scripture is from the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter and the first verse. And it says, Ho, everyone that thirsts, come you to the waters. And he that has no money, come you buy and you eat. And yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price and then our last scripture for this morning to lead us into our lesson is from the book of Ruth the fourth chapter in the first verse and it reads like this then Boaz then went Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there and behold the kinsman of whom Boaz spoke came by unto him he said ho such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. Amen. Amen. I just want to preach this morning for a little while. If y'all just give me a few more minutes all right. all right. from the topic. If there must be one for you to tell your friends what was preached on Sunday morning. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would continue to dwell with us in this place in the form of your precious Holy Spirit. Would you move, Lord, among us and have thine own way. Lord, open the hearts and minds of this waiting congregation that they might receive the word that you have deposited in your servant's spirit. Father God, right now, I ask you to bless all those that may be sick among us. Bless those that may be bereaved. I ask now a special blessing upon the Bennett family right now. Lord, touch that situation and give strength. Lord, teach us, guide us, deliver us. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. 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 Ho, ho, ho. Amen. You know, this time of year, there's three words, and they're probably the three most famous words at Christmas time and they're ho 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 uh, most of the time we attribute these words to a big fat man with a white beard that is purportedly from the North Pole mm -hmm. and he has some elves that work with him and, and, and he's supposed to come and give all of our children in the ghetto toys 
and presents and things like that, and he is uh, attributed to uh, uh, the, the words ho, ho, ho are attributed to him. And when we hear this word, these words ho, 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 we think about good times. We think about opening toys on Christmas morning. We think about colorful wrapping paper and colorful lights. It brings all of those things to our minds. And that's the image that most of us have when it comes to Christmas. When we hear those words. And the problem is that what most people don't know is that the word ho is not talking about a woman that walks the streets at night looking for men. Amen. Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about. We all adults, y'all know what I'm talking about. But the word ho is used in the English language to attract attention to something. Most of the time it's something exciting. Ho is excitement. Ho, ho, ho means that something really exciting is getting ready to happen. And, and, and everyone likes to hear some exciting news. That's two things that we like, two types of news that we like. Juicy news on somebody else besides ourselves <laughs> and exciting news about something good that's going to happen to us. Am I right about it? That's right. Yep. We, 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 we celebrate marriage announcements and we celebrate uh, uh, exciting news about a baby that's been born. Amen. 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 We celebrate new beginnings. It's exciting news when a child is born. The words ho, 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 they, 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 they ring out this time of year all over the world. And it seems like we get more excited. Uh, it creates that Christmas spirit. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, that's when you really know that it's Christmas time, when you start seeing Santa Claus at the mall <laughs> and nowadays they, they start to bring Santa Claus out earlier and earlier amen they started putting Santa Claus out before the turkeys were put away <laughs> they start putting Santa Claus out before the Halloween candy is even eaten amen they start putting him out earlier and earlier because they know that once we hear that ho 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 those cash registers gonna start Y'all might know what I'm talking about. They hope we get excited and start spending that money in those stores and start buying those things. But did you know that the man in the red suit, he, he wasn't the first one to say ho, ho, ho. A long time ago before there was any man with a red suit announcing the toys that he was bringing in the Christmas spirit with ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho came down from heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was written down in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now, the two-letter word ho is used four times in three different places in the King James Version of the Bible. And every time it's associated with some kind of exciting news that's coming. Uh, that message that God is good is concerned with the world, loves us. Wants to take care of us. For, for many of us, that's exciting news. Especially after all the mess that we've done. Especially after all the things that we've done wrong. And the, 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 the things that we've done with the wrong people. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And in the wrong places. And see, I'm encouraged today to hear something exciting. I don't know about you, but I've had enough bad news this year already. I've had enough hard times already. I've had enough bad news about money. I've had enough bad news about war. I've had enough bad news about my young people being shot in the street. And I'm excited right now to hear some exciting news that's good news. Amen? Yes. When, when I hear that ho, 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 I'm thinking of jolly, happy times that's getting ready to come. I'm thinking about some good things that are going to be provided for me from the abundance of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, 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 I gave you these three texts, and I usually don't jump around too much on text because it becomes confusing, but I just wanted to introduce you to the, the, this word and the exciting message that this word precedes. Amen? Mm -hmm. There are three exclamations terms that we frequently use and that are used even in the Bible. And the first of these is ha. 
we, we use hot. Amen? We used it a lot more when we were kids, you know? You go, you playing hide and seek, and you find somebody, say, ha! I got you. Amen? You know, you want to, it's a word of excitement. It's, it's, a, it's also a word of amazement. Uh, when you figure out something, uh, something comes to your mind, and you figure it out. You say, ah, I got it. Amen? And then the other word in the Bible uh, uh, that, that is used, that we still use today, is aha. Uh -huh. Aha is a little different from ha. Because aha has a little more malicious intent to it. You know what I mean? That's the word that your enemies would use. Aha, I caught you. Aha, I told you I'd get you. Amen? Aha is a little different. Amen? Amen? But then the third word that we talked about is hope. And hope expresses great excitement and satisfaction without all the malicious intent. Amen? So the term has more of an evangelical tone, tone. You understand what I'm talking about? And it usually announces some kind of message from heaven. Something good and supernatural is about to happen. And that's exactly what this word ho does in the places where it's used in the Bible. The first place that we see it used is, is in, in the book of Ruth. Ruth 4 and 1. And what it does is it shows Boaz using the term. Some of you know a little something about the Bible. I'm not going to take the time to explain it now. You can go back and check it out for yourself. But it, 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 it talks about Boaz and he used the term hope when he was going to announce the exciting news that he was going to buy Naomi's land back and he was going to marry Naomi's daughter-in-law and he was going to keep the inheritance of the family intact. And that the family name and the family line was going to be taken care of. And that everything was going to be all right. He said, "Ho, oh, come here and check out this. i got something to say. Amazing. See, when we celebrate Christmas and, and during this time of year, we celebrate redemption too. Just like Boaz got back the family name and got back the land that the family had and kept the family name. He redeemed them. That's what we're going to celebrate. Amen. We're celebrating Redemption. Boaz paid the price for Naomi and her family. Jesus paid the price for us. For our salvation. Amen. Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, y'all. I can't even get an amen on that. But as far as I'm concerned, that's exciting news. If somebody told you I'm going to pay the price for your Walmart bill, your Walmart layaway. Amen. Somebody would get excited. You start jumping up and down. It was a rich man that came and he paid $50,000 for everybody's layaway at Walmart. And I bet folk were jumping up and down and praising like crazy all over the place when they gave them the call. But Jesus paid the price for your salvation. And you look at me like I just told you, you owe me $50. Go ahead now. That's exciting news. I don't have to go to hell. I don't have to pay for the sins that I've already committed. I don't have to be sent down and pay the price. Jesus paid it all. That's exciting news. I've been saved by the blood of Jesus. On Calvary, my sins were atoned for. By his stripes I've been forgiven. That's exciting news. That's what it means when the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I don't have to pay. Right. So when I hear that, uh, those words, ho, 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 Amen. what I hear Amen. is the announcement, not about presents on Christmas Day, right. but when I hear ho, 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 I hear salvation. Right. I hear atonement. I hear redemption. Amen. And then our second scripture is at Isaiah 51. That's where you hear the word ho again. And it announces true satisfaction. Amen. Yes, see, see, one of those songs from the 1960s, some of y'all older folks might remember, it said, I can't get no. So I know somebody was old enough to remember that one. Amen. But I tried. I tried. And I try. Amen. And that just paints a picture of a lot of us, you know. We can't get satisfaction from anything. Many of us have more now than we've ever had for generations. 
Many of us just spent more on a pocketbook than our grandparents spent on rent. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Uh, many of us spend more to go to the movies than, than many of our, 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 our great grandparents and grandparents spent on groceries for a week. Amen? Amen? Right. But we're still not satisfied. We still don't have things that will satisfy us. And that's because things don't correlate with satisfaction. Last year, you know, your children and your grandchildren gave you a list of things that they said if they got this, they were going to be satisfied. You'd be hard pressed right now to find anything still intact and still in any type of decent condition that they said was going to satisfy them last year. The games that you spent 60, 50, and $60 for last year, they don't satisfy them. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. Last year, it was $399 for a PlayStation 3. That don't satisfy no more. Now it's got to be um, $299 for a PlayStation 3. Now this year, it's $399 for a PlayStation 4. Because the PlayStation 3 don't satisfy no more. Last year, you thought you'd be satisfied if you just got that big screen TV. But now that big screen TV, 1080p, 120 hertz, is not good enough. Now you need a 4K. I can't get no satisfaction. Amen? Isaiah made the announcement from heaven with the word hope. That if you want real satisfaction, you got to follow Christ. All right. All right. You got to follow him in earnest. I'm not talking about just being church members. I'm not talking about just coming on Christmas and Easter. But you got to follow him in earnest if you really want true satisfaction. I don't care how much you drink. I don't care how much you smoke. I don't care how much you get. I don't care how much you make. I don't care how many you sleep with. You will not be satisfied. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, the reason why you're not satisfied is because many times you get these things, but these things don't provide what you ultimately need. What you ultimately need is love. That's what we're all looking for. That's why we get dressed up. Because some of us in our work sense and our warped minds think that if we wear our pants tight enough and we get enough men to whistle at us and say yo 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 at us that we get in love we being shown love amen uh, we y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Uh, you think that if you if you if you have this and you drive this and people want this from you and you got this much money so everybody's around you that they showing you love, but you find out when the money runs out that you can't get no satisfaction. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. Nothing done to you satisfies. You know, there are some things that we thirst for. Some of us thirst for money. But you can't buy anything that's going to satisfy you. True satisfaction is what Jesus offered when he said, If any man thirst, let him come and drink of me. So those two verses, you know, they, 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 they raise a real crucial talk question that we need to ask ourselves today before we get out of here. Why are we spending all this money for things that don't satisfy us? Why are we working ourselves to the bone and running up our credit for things that are not going to give us any more enjoyment in life? The answer to that question, any man or any woman that draws close to God is going to find true satisfaction that is not dependent on how many gifts you get under your tree. Right Love, contentment, and satisfaction. Amen. That's three things that only the gospel message can give. So when you hear ho, 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 you should think love, contentment, satisfaction, not Gucci, <laughs> not Coach, not David Eden, not Nike. You should think love, contentment, and satisfaction. That's the spirit of Christmas. And then lastly, Zechariah chapter 2, verse 4 through 13. And it announces the restoration of security. Security for God's people. Immediately, 
it speaks of the Israel, Israel, Israeli nation. So you think, oh, well, it may not have anything to do with me. But I'm telling you, God is the same yesterday, today, and on, and on, and on, forevermore. Amen? The same thing he did for them, he'll do for you. And in a greater sense, it speaks to us. It said that God is going to build a fence. In other words, a wall of fire, it says specifically, around the believers that will prohibit their enemies from completely destroying them. It, the Bible said that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It shall prosper. It doesn't say that nobody ain't going to shoot at you. It doesn't say ain't nobody going to talk about you. It doesn't say nobody's going to hurt you. But it shall not prosper. In other words, it shall not win. Mm -hmm. right. I've been shot many times and it hurt. All right. I've been shot in the front. I've been shot in the back. I've been shot in the you know what. All right. And yeah, it hurt. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But they couldn't stop my roll. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Right. I'm still moving forward. Right. <laughs> I done had men talk about me. I done had women talk about me. I had people put me down. I done had them call me things. But they still can't stop my roll. Amen. They done tried to destroy my stuff and stop my stuff and take my stuff. But let me tell you something. I still keep, you better ask somebody that know. I still keep moving up. Amen. No weapon formed against me has prospered. Amen. Oh, it hurt. I got a little bit upset every now and then. But I still win. So the two verses here, they, 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 they tell you, you know, you're going to make it. On September 11, you know, our, our, our sense of security was shaking. Am I right? We started to get scared to fly on the plane. Then they had us scared to fly, uh, to, drive, uh, to ride on trains. Then they had us scared to get in the buses. Amen? They had, had us scared to open the mail. We thought some white powder might fall out and all kind of old craziness. We were insecure. We didn't have security. But we don't just want to be safe from international terrorists. We got to make sure that we safe from homegrown terrorists. Amen. We got police that are shooting our own people down in the street. Amen. We got police that are, that are supposed to be protecting us, that are terrorizing our... Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. Amen. Terrorizing us in our own neighborhoods, ignoring our rights so they can further their own agendas. And the excitement of the text is that God is going to make a fence that's not going to stay still, but it's going to move with me. Okay. Everywhere I go, this fence is going. It don't matter whether I'm at work. It don't matter whether I'm at home. It don't matter what I'm doing. This fence is going to be around me. So Zechariah introduces the text, not with one, but with two. He said, "Ho ho!" That means this is some great news. Security has come. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to be afraid anymore. All right. All right. Zechariah reminds me that I'm safe, secure, that I'm protected under the all-powerful and almighty hand of God, Amen. and that he's not going to suffer my foot to be moved. So when I hear, ho, 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 it's Christmas season, I don't think about chestnuts roasting on an open fire, but let me tell you something. When you hear ho, 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 I think about the promises of God. For me, ho, ho, ho means safety, security, and protection wherever I go. But you know what, brothers? And you know what, sisters? The season reminds me that I got something exciting to look forward to on the street corner. And at the mall, I saw a man in a red suit. I was driving down the road the other day, and I saw him riding on the back of a fire truck. But ho, 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 there's something that you all need to get excited about. And it is the goodness of the Lord. Whenever I start talking about the goodness of the Lord, I get excited. I get excited because when I was sick last year, I needed a doctor in a sick room. And there he was 
when I was in trouble. I needed a refuge. And there he was. When I was weak, I needed some strength. I got down on my knees. And there he was. When I needed a blessing, I looked up to heaven. And it came right on time. I get excited because he's a shelter in a time of storm. I get excited because he's a bridge over troubled waters. I get excited because he's a lawyer in a courtroom. I get excited. He's a rock in a weary land. I tried him and I know he's satisfied. Ho, ho, ho. There's never been a mountain that I haven't been able to climb. Ho, ho, ho. There's never been a cross I've not been able to bear. Ho, ho, ho. There's never been a battle he hasn't helped me fight. Ho, ho, ho. There's never been a darkness he didn't show me my way out. Ho, ho, ho. There's never been a trial that I couldn't endure. Ho, ho, ho. There's never been a burden that I couldn't bear. Ho, ho, ho. There was a child born in Bethlehem. His name is Jesus. He stayed on earth 33 long years. He put him in a borrowed tomb on early Sunday morning. Ho, ho, ho. He got up with all power in his hand. Ho, ho, ho. I'm all right now. Ho, ho, ho. I got my salvation. Ho, ho, ho. I got my satisfaction. Ain't he all right? Ho, ho, ho. Yes, he is. Ain't he all right? Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Yeah. He's all right. Jesus is here. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Jesus is here. Ho, ho, ho. I got my healing. Ho, ho, ho. I got my money right. Ho, ho, ho. I got my house right. Ho, ho, ho. I'm doing all right. Ain't God all right? Say ho, ho, ho. Yeah. You just remember what the Lord's done for you. Oh, yeah. Remember how he's brought you out. All right. All Listen, right. stand to your feet just for a moment. Yeah. I know the Lord <coughs> will make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Come on, somebody that's been through something today, help me sing it. I know the Lord. I know you'll make a way. Yes, he will. Somebody that went broke this year. Hey, he'll make a way for me and for you. See you safely through. I don't know about you, but I know the Lord. Hey, hey, it will make a way. Yes, you will. Listen, right now, I'm giving you an opportunity to change your life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sins, this is your opportunity. You can change everything. In one 
fell swoop, you can change all the situations and circumstances of your life. I'm giving you an opportunity right now to save your life. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I'm, I, once, you, once we get to know each other, I'll tell you some stories about me. Amen? If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. All you have to do is just come forward. Give me your hand.